small dollar credit products are loans of a relatively small dollar amount, probably anywhere, you know, a couple hundred bucks, even to a couple thousand, that help people when they are in between paychecks. So it's the byproduct of living paycheck to paycheck. So people get small dollar loans for a variety of reasons. Each loan is small, but in the aggregate, these are over $40 billion. It's not credit card lending. Uh, that goes by a lot of different names. Sometimes it's called payday, auto title. Some people could even think of using pawn shops as small dollar loans. Some people get smaller dollar loans from their friends and family, which aren't even in the sample. One side says they're expensive because they can be. People need the money. They're caught in a very difficult spot. I call it illiquid. They're coming into money. They have a huge unforeseen expense or they had a, their income was sharply down for a given month, work went cut, cut back a day or two, paycheck didn't come through on time, and they need it. And the costs of not getting that money are very high. So there are other folks who are basically on a downward spiral headed to bankruptcy, insolvency, and they're looking for any source of income they can throughout that process. And they're highly likely to default. On a high default rate means that you're going to have... Uh, a highly a loss rate for lenders, and they're going to have to charge a lot to make this product worth it. Earlier, there's one group of people who need this product because they're illiquid. They're good for it when their income or uh, comes back, and they'll be able to meet this one-time expense, whether it's a car breaking down or the fact that they missed a week of work and didn't have any sick time. That group, if you could work to it at a lower cost, would be, even, would be highly likely to pay and even more likely to pay if the costs were lower. Another group is insolvent and they're not going to pay you back. Uh, they're just looking for any stream of revenue and money they can get. If you could better distinguish which group was which, not lend to insolvent borrowers, lend to illiquid borrowers, the cost of offering the product would come down and you'd be able to offer a better product at a cheaper rate to borrowers who really need it. Yeah, so CFPB has something called Project Catalyst, where they're trying to provide seed funding and using their power of big data and creating more innovation in the space. And I consider that they ought to focus in trying to spur the market to consider what these non-traditional factors ought to be, to be incorporated to better distinguish between illiquid and insolvent borrowers. When you start reframing the consumer borrowing pool and look at the product from the consumer's point of view, Think about what data and analytics you can bring to bear to improve the rate of detecting illiquid versus insolvent bearers. The Bureau now has a bunch of data on payday lending and a bunch of other data that the federal government didn't have access to before Dodd-Frank, before the creation of CFPB, because that space had no federal supervision. Now, with hindsight of, and benefit of federal supervision and data, let's go forward and try and figure out and see private market participants to figure out what types of data sources can help distinguish between illiquid and insolvent borrowers better, and then allow the market with that information to try and innovate and drive down prices.